Okay, hello everybody. Welcome. Uh, today we're going to discuss the solution to the problem maximum scored words formed by letters. It's a hard rated problem, but is based on a couple of simple observations. It is also one of the top most highly accepted problems on lead code when it comes to dynamic programming. In fact, it's the second most accepted one. We'll get to that and a solution that gives us a close to 100% runtime. But first, let's slowly build up our intuitions. Okay, we've given a list of words, a list of single letters, characters, which might or might not be repeating, and score of every character. So there's a list of words, a list of letters, and each letter in that list has a particular amount of score, and that contributes to the overall score of the word. That is sort of a general theme here. That's one part. The other part is saying that return the maximum score of any valid set of words formed by using the given letters. Okay, what does this mean? This means that you have a given fixed set of letters. Each time you create a word from it, you pull out from that set of letters and those letters get consumed in creating that word. Now the word you have created in your hand now gives you a certain amount of score. For this now list of letters, you have to pick out these particular words in such a way, the ordering does not, does not matter by the way for this words list, you just have to create a word in that list and you have to create those words, you have to figure out such a possible combination of these words such that it gives you the highest possible score. Okay, let's talk about it in a more organized manner. We're given three things, words, letters that are given to us, the available set of letters which get consumed while creating words, and score of every single letter. So score goes here, letter goes here. There is sort of the dependency. The goal is to return the maximum possible scoring of any selection of words. Again, the ordering of words does not matter, but we're going to think about it still in the terms of list as I'll explain later. Okay. The goal then is to like just reframing, select the right combination of words. Now, how do you find the right combination of words? It's not an exactly easy task to enumerate all the possible combinations. I mean, if you look at it, there are sort of say N words in the list and what would then happen is you would either select the word or not select the word. So there are two to the bar N now possible combinations of every single word. That does not sound very good. What else? Uh, selecting the right words is important. And the way you define right by saying, okay, how do we know a given possible word is the right one to pick at any point of time? The thing is we don't. And we'll never know until we look into the future of the consequences of selecting a particular word. So let's say you figure out and you pick the first word in the list. Okay, you have the first word in the list, you consume the letters, and now you'll go ahead and look into the future. You'll see what all possible combinations of word it could give and what their score is. Now, if the score is the highest possible, there you go, you have the answer. If not, well, just move on, select another word. Okay, uh, so how do we know which one to select and which one is the best? Well, just recurse. The way you look into the future is by recursion. If you have seen any of my videos, that should immediately strike you. Let's talk about the second part, which is much easier. We're saying that once you have selected the right combination of words, how do you know if a word is any sort of powerful or not? How, how much score it gives you is going to be just the sum of the scores of its individual characters in words. Very simple. One thing to also note is that these letters get consumed at each point of time you create a new word. So to create a new word from a list of letters, those letters have to get consumed. Whatever is remaining is still available for you. Okay, let's talk about the recursion logic in depth again. So we'll look at words as list. Um, again, the ordering does not matter, but for the sake of convenience, we'll just assume that they're a list. No other set or anything else or other data structures will not uh, give you the best possible sort of thought process and approach. So we have a list of words. Let's say we select the first word. How do we know that it's any word? We'll look at 
will look at the future of what happens with the consequences of this curve. So maybe you're given a list of letters as well. You consume sort of the letters of the zeroth word with marked in blue. Now you recurse, you look at the first word, you apparently can't form it because you've consumed the letters that were required to create the first word. That's fine, we can just move on to letter two, word two. Here you find that you can create this word. Sounds good, right? You'll just consume those letters again and you'll add it to your overall possible score. Now the score is zero plus the score of two. And what do you do from this point on? Just call another recursion. So it will take care of itself. Now just like zero called two, which was the most appropriate, two will call three and three will call five. This is the basic logic of recursion. Okay. This was all for what happened when you selected the zeroth element. What if you selected the first element instead? Again, the same logic. We'll look at the first element. Now the zeroth element doesn't matter by the way. Whatever's behind it is just forgotten. We're only looking forward. We're only looking into the future, not in the past. We'll look at the present. We'll get the one score. We'll save that. Great. And then we'll iterate and we'll find this score. If you find the score, great. Just call another recursion and we'll be done. Now, as soon as you call this recursion, four will now also call five. What's happening here, by the way, is you don't have to compute anything from five point onwards because you already have looked at it here. Basically, this is uh, this is the part where we introduce memoization. If you have already seen this element before, you know what its future is and how or what is the best possible score it can give you. So basically, saving these results is a good idea. Now let's look at what happened if you select the second element. So zero, one, two here. What do you see here? You'll see that, okay, this is a typo here, but you'll see that this element has already been accessed. You already have the answer for this as seen above here. So you don't need to do this anymore computation. You can just look at the second result and voila, you have the result. Cool. So this is the core of the problem. Now let's talk about the data structures. This is again a very small part. Words is a list, as I mentioned again and again. What about letters? So characters can repeat in letters and ordering is not really important. We just want to have like this giant set of letters from which we can pull out stuff from. For the sake of convenience, you can look at it in the form of a dictionary where each key is the character and each value is the frequency. However, for implementation purposes, a dictionary is not that good of an idea. That's because dictionaries are mutable. And we'll look at it in terms of list, which is actually we're going to look at it in the form of tuples, which are immutable and thus can be passed on easily in the recursion. This is more of Python related stuff, but still matters for our implementation. Other languages will also have a bit of complicated mess with dictionaries, so list is suggested for every case. Okay, let's actually get down to implementing it. Okay, first we need letters counter. Letters counter is going to count whatever the frequency of each and every single character is. We can do that in the list simply by indexing each character. So the character A gets the index 0 and the character Z gets the index 25. Pretty simple. So we'll iterate over these characters in letters and we'll look at letters letters counter okay now this letter counter is going to take an element and see we'll do plus equals to one but this is uh, not an index this is actually a character so we'll just uh, figure out what the index of this character is how do we do that in python you will take the ordinal of this and subtract it from the ordinal of a as simple as that okay now in recursion what are the two things that matter we first of all know that we want to recur. So let's actually uh, write a template for it. We'll recurs, pass. And at the end, we want to return the recursion from, well, the point where we start is important. As marked in yellow here, we are selecting zero for second or the ionth index. This is an important part of recursion and we'll start from zero and we'll call it index for late purposes. So index basically marks that this is the point we're looking at. This is the present of our considerations and we're going to look into the future from that. Okay, that should make sense. Uh, what is the other thing that should be passed on to recursion? 
See, each time you make a decision to pick out a word, the list of the letters counters also change. Each time you pull out a word from these letter counters, their values decrease. They have to adequately represent that some letters what were consumed. So we'll also send in letters counter. So we'll also have it passed here. And we're not going to pass it as a list. We're going to pass it as a tuple. Why is that? We'll get to that very soon. But mostly the idea is that Python has this uh, pass by name reference, pass by object reference, and pass by object value, something like that. So basically, you don't want it to be uh, something that is mutable. Immutable objects are allowed. Immutable objects are what we're going to use. This also means that, by the way, we can use LRU caching. And this is where the memoization part comes in. Basically, when you're, when you're doing the computations for this part, the two element is already considered. So when you're looking at this two, starting from index two, you already know the answer. And that is the entire point of this LRU cache. In other languages, you have to explicitly specify that, but that's more of an implementation detail. Let's continue with this recursion function. Now, when will this recursion function end? When will this end? Well, when you have reached the end of this array, which is say in this length of six array, if you have reached the index six or anything greater than that, then it's time to call the stop sign. Okay, so we'll say if index is greater than or equals to the length of the array. So we're going to also store n as the length of words. Uh, let's just make this a bit cleaner. We'll have these functions over here. So if that is the case, then return what? The entire point of this recursion is to return the maximum possible answer for a combination of index and the letter counter. To return a maximum possible answer, which means that in case you have exhausted the list, that's just return zero for you. Let's also return answer in case that is not true and we'll start answer from zero. That's the worst possible case. You don't give me any score, that's still fine. We're gonna return it here. Now, what's the goal of recursion? We want to iterate over all the possible indices from index and onwards. This is as we discussed. You only want to look at your present and the future. We don't care about the past. We forget about the past. The past has already been accounted for. Okay, now we'll iterate over that. And we'll say the current word is the word of I. Simple. Um, now what we want to we want to wait to say answer equals to the max of whatever the answer was before and if we can somehow improve that we can improve that by looking at the current word in consideration so we we'll get the score of this current word and recurs from this point onwards so we'll write letters count here this should make sense getting the score of the word, saving that, and we'll add it to the results of this recursion. So we'll look at the present here in the get score, and we'll look at the recursion here, which will get us the future. So present plus the future. We're going to save that in answer. This should make sense. Let's also write a get score function just to make life easier. So we'll take in the input as word, and what do we do of it? It's a very simple, you take the sum of each of the individual scores of the character's word. So we'll return the sum of for each character in word. We'll take not just the character, but actually the score of the character. And the character is, by the way, still the actual character. We want to convert it to an ordinal first minus the ordinal of A. This is similar to what we've done here. We just want this to be converted to an index, as simple as that. Now this will get the score of a word and we can also cache this. This, by the way, you can also skip because it's a constant order of uh, time operation. It's not actually constant. This part is constant, but uh, this part will take order of say, M for a length of word M. Still, we'll just cache it just for the easiness of the 
showing that 100% time better than everyone else. Okay, cool. So now we want to write this part where it says required is equals to i plus one letters counter. This by the way is incorrect. And this is not as simple as just this is the solution because you also have to do this point, which I stressed again and again is an important part. Letters get consumed at each point you create a word. Make sense? So we'll consume the letters now. We'll iterate over all the characters in this current word, in this current word and only in this current word, and we'll consume the letters one by one. Now, it's not a good idea to just mutate. See, by the way, this letters counter is already a tuple, so let's have a new letters counter, which will make it as a list of letters counter. This new one is where we'll make the edits and we'll also send a new one here. Cool. Now we'll make edits on the new one. We'll say new letters counter of the current word C, which is again going to be the ordinal of C minus the ordinal of A. And we're going to do minus equals to one. This has a small catch. Uh, the values can now easily go into negatives in case you weren't able to form that word. Let's say that you have the characters A, B, and C, and the word required is cat. In that case, what would happen? Well, C would get consumed, A would get consumed, B still remains, but the cat, in, the T in cat would also get consumed, giving you a score of negative one in the place of T, which is something we don't allow. So we'll just do a quick sanity check here. And we'll say, you know what, let's first check if it's greater than zero, if it exists. And only if it exists, we're going to reduce its score. Okay, what's the other case? What if we had the case like cat again, and we weren't able to find T? Okay, think about it, because in that case, we'll just break. That is not a valid case anymore. You can't form that particular word. This particular word that you thought you could find using and form using the wet letters here, new letters counter, you were not able to do that. Which means that we'll just say, okay, let's have a flag here, which says that if is possible, only then do it. If it's not possible to create the word, we'll just let it go and move on to a new word. So we'll say is possible for each and every word, by the way, we'll have it here. We'll set is possible equals to false in case we cannot form that word. Okay, uh, let's do a quick sanity check. Run okay. time error, word, right, so words. Uh, we're getting very close to submitting this. Okay, right. So we converted this to a list here. We also want to convert it back to a tuple for the recursion part. Okay, great. So we'll just submit it here and uh, let's talk about the space time complexities. Okay, it says 91%. Hmm, we could maybe do a couple of more optimizations. Anyways, uh, it should be uh, pretty good. 91% is not that bad either. But first, uh, let's talk about the space time complexities. So, what about get score? We iterate over all the characters in the word, which is going to take, say, order of m where m is the maximum length of all words. So inside of all words, all words have a particular length and we'll just select the maximum length to be kept as m. This function now has an order of m complexity in time. Space is one, we are just going to return the sum. Okay, what about this function? This function takes an input as index and letter counter. Okay, what about this? Let's break it down again. In this case, this for loop looks like it's going to take order of n time complexity and is the length of the words array. The length of word itself is not the same as the length of word array. This is the length of word array. Length word array. Okay, it's order of n. We'll do these computations. These are fine, fine, fine. These are just single order of time complexity operations. Nothing really is out of the blue here. And then we'll get to finally calling this again. So now 
uh, this function is order of m which gets called in order of n function here so it looks like it will give you a time complexity of order of m times n which is only for this function by the way we'll actually keep it above here because it's inside of this function that this happens what about this recursion part actually i don't know either let's think about that together we have the index here and there can be n possible cases of the index what about the letters counter um, that is going to be a size of 26 list which is still order of constant space time that's fine so we have basically order of n here and this order of n is going to call another order of n in here which is going to take order of n here so it looks like this space time complexity would be m times n times n i think that looks good uh, what about the space complexity is the maximum height of the recursion stack which is going to be order of n uh, it's basically the n number of items in the list which is the n number of indices that could be there anyways uh, i think this should be it uh, if you have any questions doubts comments let me know any feedback is greatly appreciated and if you like please like it and if you want more of this subscribe uh, anyways i'll put a write-up here in the discussion as well so you can check this entire thing out if you just want the code as well anyways that's it thanks for watching